Hello everyone, welcome back to a new Lessons with Lydia. If you are new here, then Lessons with Lydia is a series created to help you understand your wardrobe better and basically to help you make the most out of your wardrobe on your own without feeling like you have to kind of copy what you see on YouTube. It's about creating those foundations for you and those um, bits and snippets of information so that you can actually go into your own wardrobes and develop your own sense of style. So today we're focusing on things you should stop doing in your wardrobe. When it comes to dressing, I think sometimes we fall into these patterns, we maybe hear these kind of almost old wives tales of things and just basically fall within a category or a box almost a stereotype of our own dressing. And actually it's really refreshing to think about what not to do and how to break those molds and break down those barriers. So hopefully this video will help you. I've got seven steps, so let's get into the first one. So my first I actually talk about all the time and I'd say it's probably my fundamental rule when it comes to dressing. So please, whatever you do, stop ignoring the icing on the cake. And by the icing on the cake, um, I predominantly mean your jewellery because jewellery is a real way to express your personality and also just add that interest in that layering and that dimension to your outfit that you otherwise don't have. It is the icing on the cake and we all know that it's the icing that completes the cake. So I'm just going to show you an example here of wearing a classic white shirt and some jeans, a really, really simple look. Um, one I go to time and time again, but it kind of just lacks a little bit of something. It doesn't feel complete to me, and that's because I've not got any jewelry with it. So I'm going to be using all Monica Vinada pieces to style up this look, and this section is sponsored by Monica Vinader. Um, I'm sure you're all very familiar with the brand, but they are a sustainable jewelry brand with the most delightful pieces. So all of their pieces are made with 100% recycled 18 karat gold and sterling silver and also feature ethically sourced pearls, gemstones, diamonds. So a really great one to shop from. Um, I'm just styling some of the pieces here with the white shirt. So I've got some of the bracelets and decided to do some layering with them because I think that's what creates the interest in your look. I love seeing um, other people's kind of stacking selection and it's something I'm always drawn to on Instagram or in real life, just people's jewelry and how they've paired it together. So I've got on here the Fiji gem diamond bracelet, which is just absolutely stunning. And I love the diamonds because it helps you to wear the silver and gold together if you want to mix your metals. I've also got the altar bracelet on in the sterling silver and um, the gold. It's the one I'm wearing here as well. And then this new Keshi pearl bracelet from their new Mother of Pearl collection, which is absolutely stunning. I'll link all of the pieces below, but for the rings, I've got this beautiful diamond essential wrap ring, which I just think is absolutely stunning. This chunky Dea ring, again with the diamonds, meaning you can bring that silver into there as well. And then these Ulta Capture Charm diamond earrings. They have such a good selection of earrings. So there's kind of something for everyone. If you're more of kind of a necklace gal, more of a bracelet, and like to do that stacking selection, or just like a single bracelet, there is really something for everyone on there. If you are somebody who wears your jewelry day after day, um, they do do a wear and repair program where basically you can send your jewelry back to them and they will help to prolong the life of your pieces so that you really do have them in your wardrobe forever. And the beauty of jewelry is that it never really goes out of style. Um, these pieces I'll be able to wear on repeat forever. Um, so yeah, really gorgeous brand, as I say, sustainable as well. All of their packaging too is made out of recycled materials and their packaging is also really lovely as well. I do have a 20% discount code for you, which I will write on screen now and also pop in the description box for you along with all of the links to each of the pieces. But um, as I say, for me, jewelry, the icing on the cake is something none of us should ever neglect. So if you're thinking about growing your jewelry wardrobe, then really look to Monica Vinader for those timeless wearable pieces. So my next is to stop listening to colour matching myths. So by colour matching myths, I basically mean those things we hear or have heard 
Maybe in past generations that get carried down, people mention it. Things like uh, black and brown don't work together, or navy and black don't work together, or red and green should never be seen. And I know in the US you say, don't wear white after Labor Day. So all of these kind of color myths that you hear around, um, just ignore them. Let's throw them to the wayside. For example, I love pairing black and navy together. Um, in my cutaway, I've got some black wide leg trousers, navy sweatshirt and navy coat. Equally, I would do brown and navy together or I would do black and brown together. But those things that you traditionally hear don't work well. I think they look so chic, especially in navy and black. I think it looks so good for workwear. I think it looks so elegant um, and expensive looking. I just think it's such a beautiful pairing um, and really easy to achieve as well. We probably all own maybe something navy and something black in our wardrobe. So think about how you can combine them. And then another red and green should never be seen. I thought let's debunk that myth. So I've got my wine colored trousers on from my collection with Naked. I think the might, they might have sold out now but there might be a few left in stock. And I've got it on with this very subtle green coat. So it doesn't need to be really red and really green together but you can do variations of this to make them pair nicely and I love this combination of these wine colored trousers with this lighter green and it's a way I would transition that darker wine color into the new season then you can pair it with white if you want to to give it a bit of a lift I've also added my khaki bag in so forget the color rules throw out the rule book and try mixing and matching some of your favorite shades together Number three, stop saving things for best. Okay, we're all guilty of this and I'm by no means saying go and put your best blazer on and wear it around the house when you're doing the cleaning. I'm not saying that at all and I think that's so unrealistic, but I think we're often guilty. My mum says this all the time, but she'll buy something and then she'll be saving it for best and then it comes around to actually wearing it and she feels like it's gone out of style and then what a complete waste of money that is. I know the idea of saving it for best is that you have that nice one piece that you can go to, but it's an absolute waste of money if you never end up wearing it or kind of wear it very minimally. The point of clothes is to wear them, embrace them, enjoy them. If it gets a mark on it, it gets a mark on it. It's not the end of the world, there are fixes for those things. Um, but just enjoy your clothes, just wear them. Um, like I say, I don't mean wear them around the house or wear them when you're being slobby or whatever, but just if you're going out somewhere um, and you always feel like you're saving something, bring it out, enjoy it, use it. Um, wear it if you're just going out for a casual meal, wear it if you're going to a friend's house. Just embrace those pieces in your clothes for all of your occasions and all of the things that you do. Being truly stylish is having that wardrobe where you always feel like you've made an effort for the right occasion and I think getting out those good pieces is a way to do that. Number four, stop obsessing over size. We all look at the labels on things, I think, um, and I know some people are more paranoid about it than others. I personally am kind of over it. There's probably a time when I was more conscious of it, but forget about the size. As we know, sizing can be all over the place with all different brands. So for example, I'm wearing these trousers. These are from Philippa K. I've got 34 on here. I'm normally a standard 36, so I've got a size down. I think this is kind of between a six to an eight. So I've got the smaller size on here. And then this shirt, I think I went to a size 12 in this, which is I'm normally an eight. So that's two sizes above what I normally am. So I've got the complete opposite spectrums on and then the jumper over my shoulders is a size small um but then i also think i can always get into size mediums as well so forget the sizes they don't matter they're not important what matters is how something looks how something fits how it feels how it works in your wardrobe so if you feel like an item is a bit too tight a pair of jeans for example we're all guilty of this jeans can sometimes run so small especially in that stiff denim if they're not your usual size don't hesitate to go up because i often think things look better a little bit oversized as well especially denim Okay, next is don't neglect your footwear. 
you might wear the same trainers on repeat. Again, I'm, I am guilty of it. You might wear the same trainers on repeat or the same shoes, but actually your footwear can make or break your outfit, whether that's in terms of comfort or in terms of just how the outfit looks all together. So for example, I've got these beautiful Arquette loafers on. I just think they look so chic with this all black outfit. Um, and they really elevate it and give it that pop of color because the rest of the outfit is black. They're also gorgeous quality. You can tell the leather on them is really good and the way they've been designed and made just feels really nice and put together. That said, I don't think you need to spend a fortune on good footwear. My next example is a pair of Mango trainers, which um, are a new in piece. They're a leather trainer from Mango. Um, I think these are about 55 pounds or something like that. And I just think they look so chic. And again, completely changed the way the outfit looks. I've got the same trousers on, but just gone for this smart coat. And these trainers, I think, really make this very simple outfit into what it is. So don't neglect your footwear. I think if anything, where you're gonna invest should be your footwear, accessories, things like that. The rest of your outfit, you can keep very minimal, very basic. Um, it's those little icings on the cake, again, that will transform your look. So number six is stop feeling like you need high price items in your wardrobe. So that lends itself nicely to what I was just saying. You don't need to invest loads to look good. Trust me, you don't. I think you can have an amazing outfit that's head to toe H&M that looks beautiful as much as you could have a head to toe outfit from net porte that looks awful. It's all about how it fits, how it looks, how you've styled it, how you feel in it. Um, do you feel good in it? I think that's the main thing because that exudes um, your confidence in the rest of your outfit. It just kind of comes from how you feel in that look. So don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money. Um, you can buy some really simple minimal pieces from some great high street brands and you've not spent a fortune. You can mix and match them. So that's why I always think a minimal wardrobe is a good idea. Finally, stop focusing on big, bold trends. Um, we don't need to do this. There are ways to look a little bit more fashion forward, and that is through those subtle micro trends. I've done a whole video on micro trends recently, but for me, these are pieces that maybe um, you already have in your wardrobe, but are having a spotlight moment. So example, Stripe jumpers really had a moment last year, the year before, stripe jumpers were everywhere, but it's a classic piece in your wardrobe. Things like a maxi skirt, you can have in your wardrobe forever, it's very simple. Things like ballet flats, they're having a moment. So all those micro trends, you can add them together if you want to, but they're basically classic pieces that you can pull out and have that spotlight moment and kind of wear them for the season. So forget those big, bold, in your face, current trends that feel a little bit overwhelming and that go out within five minutes. It's all about those micro trends to refresh your wardrobe, but that you can also come back to them time and time again and year after year. So that is my final tip. You can check out that micro trend video as well um, if you want some more info. That is all of the tips now, all seven. I really hope they've been useful to you. If you have, let me know. Let me know what you're guilty of. I'm probably guilty of them all in some respect, but uh, do let me know what you're guilty of because I'd be really interested to know. By the way, this is from Almada the label. I know I'll get asked, um, but yeah, it's really nice and cozy. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget your Monica Vinida discount code and don't forget to subscribe as well whilst you're here. Uh, thank you so much and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.